Good morning. Please be seated. <clears throat> so many of you probably don't know me. My name is Logan Loveless. I'm a seminarian at Virginia Theological Seminary, where Andrew went. <clears throat> um, I'm going into my senior year. I've been here in Chicago this summer doing my clinical pastoral education training, uh, so training as a chaplain uh, at Northwestern Hospital. Uh, I'm originally from the Diocese of Western North Carolina, so if you hear a little bit of that uh, twang come out, that's where that comes from. It's been a joy to be able to worship with you all this summer while I've been here, and I want to thank you for allowing me to be here and to speak these words today. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother of us all. When I was a kid, I used to love playing with action figures. I had all kinds of heroes and Disney characters like Flash, Aladdin, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Wonder Woman, you name it. But one of my favorite action figures was a figure of Bruce Wayne. It was Bruce Wayne, and it had all these little parts that you could clip onto his body that made the Batman suit so that he would be Batman. The figure came out shortly after the film Batman Forever where Val Kilmer played Batman. There were pieces that clipped onto the chest and to the arms and to the legs, and it even had boots. As a kid, I loved the idea of Batman or Bruce Wayne, a person that didn't have to have any mutations in order to make him a superhero. It was his suit and the gadgets that made him super and aided him in fighting evil. And he did so anonymously, masking his identity with his suit. So I loved having this action figure that could quickly be disguised with a few little snaps. Now, I don't think Paul was trying to tell the people then or us now that we need to make a bat suit and go out looking for bad guys. But there are some things we do need to put on in order to stand strong in the Lord. I'm fully aware this passage has been used to encourage some terrible behavior and discrimination some have taken the notion of spiritual warfare to justify wars against particular peoples or name particular others evil and enemies of God. However, if we look back at the original context and audience, we are reminded of the pacifism of the early Christians. These Christians may have faced daily discrimination, harassment, and possibly even suppression from the authorities. If we look at the whole of the letter to the Ephesians, the author speaks of the transformation, the transformed life Christians are to live. Christians, their households, and communities are to have a high moral standard, living in love, forgiveness, and thankfulness. This seems hard enough to attain today. I cannot imagine what it was like for the early Christians. This passage provides the framework for what the transformed lives we as believers are supposed to live. The author is quite specific about most of the armor we are to put on and the posture we are to take. It's not a passive stance. About four times we are told to stand. Some of you may even be familiar with some of the pieces that we are to put on as armor. We are told to fasten the belt of truth around our waist, put on the breastplate of righteousness, to take up the shield of faith, 
the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. If you notice, most of these items are for defense. However, there is one instruction for the armor that really stood out to me this time as I read this passage. As for the shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. So we need to take with us truth and righteousness, our faith, our identities as Christian people, children of God, and the word of God that helps to ground us. But we have a choice in our shoes. Put on whatever will make you proclaim the gospel of peace. Put on your high heels or your flip-flops or your sneakers, your loafers or your boots. But if we have and we probably want to put on something that we can feel comfortable in, something we can stand firm in. After all, these are the shoes that are going to help us to proclaim the gospel of peace. But what does this even mean to proclaim the gospel of peace? Today, it seems there is little place for peace. We fight and we argue about nearly everything. We are divided. We are divided politically on how we are going to live our lives during a global pandemic, on who does or does not have a right to love, and we are divided religiously. These differences lead to horrific violence, such as what we are seeing in Afghanistan today. We are still plagued by racism that needs to be dismantled and we take on these labels of liberal and conservative, Republican or Democrat, separating ourselves from one another and further removing ourselves from relationship to one another. And it can all start to feel overwhelming. But we are to proclaim the gospel of peace. This does not mean that we are to be peacekeepers. No, we are to be peacemakers. What Paul is talking about for our lives is not about conformity. In fact, our stance and our convictions to be a people of peace can make us unpopular. Even Jesus offended some of the disciples and they walked away in today's gospel lesson. Paul is not even asking us to be stubborn, wedded to an opinion that makes us prejudiced or close-minded. A stubborn person will not listen to ideas that differ from their own. Stubbornness rejects alternatives and refuses to change one's position. It is not informed and there's very little room for growth. Standing firm is different. Standing firm means that a person is willing to draw from their convictions, to doubt, to debate, listen, and consider alternatives that benefit the whole. No doubt, stress and anxiety are present when we have to go to engage significant matters. We have to consider our basic principles and beliefs in order to appropriately prepare for the struggle. We have to think about what we are up against if we want to be successful. We must prayerfully prepare ourselves inwardly so that we don't react outwardly contrary to the peace grace, mercy, and love of God that we proclaim. It may not be popular. We may have to admit sometimes that we are wrong. We, have to, we may have to listen sometimes to someone that we don't agree with. However, 
As children of God, we are called to strive to do better, to be better neighbors, and to love our enemies. When criticism comes, we seek nurturing from our tradition and our community of faith. I have seen great things from this congregation and parish, and it's obvious that you all are peace seekers. So when we wake up in the morning, we have a choice to make on what shoes we're going to put on. We need shoes that are appropriate for the occasion. Can the shoes handle the terrain? Will the shoes get us to where we need to go? What shoes do we need in order to make us makers of peace? Our other pieces of armor will protect us, but we have choices to make on what shoes will help us to get us where we are going. Shoes that we can stand firmly and confidently in. We have to move forward as Christians in whatever shoes we have to proclaim the gospel of peace. So what kind of shoes are you wearing right now? When we leave here today, will we be led to stand for peace, justice, and love?